Yeah, g'day, Hunter, Outback EV. This is my little shop, Alistronics. I've been in Alice Springs since 2002, so just over 22 years now. Came here for a job and maybe just a two year stint and fell in love with the place and stayed here ever since. So it's been pretty good. We, uh, I was working um, out at a, a, a little um, base out here for a start. That's what drove me up here and then uh, had the opportunity to buy Alistronics. So we finished up after just a few years of, of employed work and took on my own business. So, wow, mm, goodies in here. Love the smell of lead acid in the morning. Okay, <laughs> so uh, you might get a whiff of that. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the uh, the solar baby. Um, that's the roof of it. This was in the, and in, in fact, to prove that it's real. Well, there's the Sydney, there's, Sydney there's the, Olympics. The Sydney logo. Olympics 2000. Yep. Up here is the actual temporary registration plate from 2000. It was wow. only registered and. And uh, unfortunately, can never be registered. It's just, it's 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 got seat belts, but I don't know if I really think the seat belts would stop anything. Correct. It was used for um, shuffling the the uh, athletes around the place, around okay. the complex. There was two types. This was the bigger one uh, that had four seats, and there was another one that was a golf buggy type that only had three seats. Yep. This one. As you can see, it's off the chassis. This is the chassis of it, made by Fraser Nash out of England in the days. Mm. They actually had, if you can see here, I might have to have a bit of a close in, so that every, mo every wheel has a motor on it. Quite a large uh, Fraser Nash DC, a separately excited DC motor. So it doesn't actually have magnets in it. It has a separate coil for the, for the rotor. Mm -hmm. So you have to have two sets of leads going to it, but it's still a DC motor. So out of that uh, other car, the Exa, we, we kind of took its, inverter which happened to be a dc inverter as well off the warp nine and now that's actually running at the moment just we test drive the two motors on this side we're just going to hook up the other motors on the other side finally so that's actually going to drive all four motors we're probably going to have a bit of a change over switch so it just drives two motors on one like rear wheel drive maybe and then four wheel drive if we need it the only downside is is because in the exa we actually have a gearbox to get reversed this one we actually have to do it electronically so I'm going to use a winch motor, a winch motor solenoid to actually reverse the thing. So that's to be to be done. Yeah. <laughs> the batteries, uh, these are also out of telco sites. So we're, we're reusing them, not recycling. Sorry. So, so, the, uh, the so orange, these orange guys and yep. these guys behind you, um, you'll see them as a lead acid version of what we saw with the other ones. So yep. these are an older style, but they still use them in, in a lot of areas. Mm -hmm very rarely been used but when they use they usually go flat so they've been hammered in a sense but yeah you know, there's still a bit of life and not all of them are great we, we've had to to weed out the the problem childs but these ones actually are coming up pretty well just cycling these guys to balance them out so these are actually 12 volt balances don't worry about the digits on them but they actually are doing their job they're nice and warm um, so they're actually balancing out all the cells to to sit at you know around about between 12.8 and 13.6 yep so these guys, the reason it was called Solar Baby was actually had two solar panels on the roof. That wouldn't actually charge the main pack. That was here for the actual 12 volt pack, yep. which just runs all the accessories, the lights and stuff. So unfortunately, yeah, she still needed to be charged up every night. But I'd really like to get this going because again, um, around the back of our place, which you may have, may have spotted, there's actually a lot of um, country that we could use the full drive on mm -hmm. without having it to be registered. Yep. They were kind of a bit of a thing at the time. Again, Sydney 2000s was meant to be the yeah, it was green a, games, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, well, Where are we now? It's 24 years <laughs> later and we're still not green. Well, yeah. But that, that's kind of the idea. As you can see on the back of that, that'll sit on this. And yeah. then this guy just becomes part of the chassis. So, look, do you know, so do you know how many of them were uh, made I, or used? I, I don't know if it was 100, okay, it was but quite it was a few. pretty close. Yeah, like okay. it was in the, in the, definitely in the double digits. Um, I know one particular caravan park maybe had more, probably 15 or 16 of them. You know, they used to use them just to go around the caravan park as their work gear. Yeah. So think of them as a, a pretty heavy duty golf buggy. I yeah. mean, if you, you look at them, they're all got double wishbone suspension, just like the Teslas do. Yeah. Um, it's really, really made to, to fit. Made for lead acids, so nice and low center of gravity. Again, they've, they've built the car around the batteries. 
Don't they call the uh, the three of the Y a golf cart with an with an iPad? Right? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, mobile iPad. This one didn't definitely didn't have an iPad. This was definitely all analog. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, we've Frankensteined it a little bit, but we do have spinning wheels. So um, I'm, um, I can't quite show you that that's on the ground at the moment because it's a bit hard that's, to get out of that spot. But well, I guess you'll have to trust me. Yeah, yeah, spinning wheels. That's a, that's, that's a, usually a good thing. Yeah. I'd love to get this going because I have a, a, a daughter that um, could have a bit of practice before she gets her license, and she'd love it. Um, so that's actually kind of, kind of, yeah, it might last a couple of years and then we'll find a decent home for it. I think it'd be great. We're actually near a golf course anyway. Not that I play golf, but I reckon I could find a, a lover and an owner that would use it for the golf course. Because I, I think still it's very, very, very handy to have around um, that type of situation. Are you, are you aware of any else, anybody else doing conversions with these or that the original ones are still working? So, so Fraser Nash, who, who made them, were very, very tight-fisted about the information. You look on the you look on the internet about Solar Baby, Fraser Nash, and there's, well, basically two fifths of yep. nothing you yep. can find on it, um, which was a shame because, you know, they've, they've all but given up on them. I don't think even well, Fraser Nash still exists, but they they definitely have them down the information down in the archives. So the guys that were doing this basically in the last 20 years, they've either <laughs> finished up, um, retired, died, everything else. So the, the information is really sparse and we've had to just cobble it together. A lot of the things they've done, because um, the, the controller on these were really complicated, analog controller. And, and when everyone said, look, the controller stuff, they've had to replace it with like a Curtis controller like this. So we've kind of followed suit with just trying to keep the thing running. Yep. A, a part of the issue was this was a, the Fraser Nash version was a 72 volt system, so which was six, six batteries. We've had to, sorry, seven. Yeah, anyway, um, we've had to, this guy starts at 80 volts. So we've had to, you know, jimmy in another battery or two as well. So to, just to make it a, um, just to get it over the threshold. So that converter will work. But then that's led to a lot of other things. But anyway, that's, that's part of conversion. Probably around about 2014, when we still had the shop, we were looking for a company vehicle that, and so we settled on that point for, for Mitsubishi Hybrid or PHEV. And in fact, that's when um, that little power point up there got put in to charge it, <laughs> the one up the top. It was yep. just, a, just a little 15 amp that I could charge it during the day. And I found this thing called PlugShare. Uh, so I put it on PlugShare, <laughs> being the only one in Central Australia. And so this was around about 2015. Wow. So if you look at the whole map of Australia, and, then, and that's when I found, well, hey, look at the map of Australia. Oh, there's all these red dots around here. And so we figured out about Tesla and that. And uh, so a few years later, um, we actually had a couple of the Tesla owner group guys come through Alice Springs. Yep. And they, uh, they gave me a ride. And... Uh, Wow, that kind of blew my mind because getting the, the power of a PHEV versus a Tesla um, certainly changed my and blew my mind over it all. And that, that was probably, you know, although I was already setting up for a win with the PHEV and understanding what it was, there was a fair few bugs with them. That actually, still, I still worked out that I actually was using that like 85 or 89% of the time on electric mode, you know, I very yeah. rarely used it in petrol mode. So that's when I figured out too, oh, I think electric's the way to go. And when I saw the, the way the Teslas worked, that pretty well twitched my mind and we started looking at cars. So we, that was about the time, I think, when the Model 3 was just coming on to order. So we ordered a Model 3, but then we figured out that's gonna be another two and a half years away. So I started looking around for a second-hand one and at that stage, they were really, really rare. Um, but this girl came up in, um, uh, from Tesla as a certified pre owned and so that way I got all the, the warranties and everything rejiggered on them from, from day dot, even though it was a, a four-year-old car then. Uh, I'd only done 20,000 Ks. Uh, it's had a bit of a facelift. You, you probably would say, hang on, that's not a 2014. That's yeah, a, okay, yep. No, nah, but she, she, she did cop an emu one stage, so it was a good excuse to give her a facelift. So the, 10 years old she is now. The perils of uh, driving in oh, the outback. Oh, absolutely, yeah. the outback, yeah, yeah. So this is actually the first Tesla that was in this town um, back in 2017. Yep. There's now 35 Teslas, um, and there's about probably another 20 others, you know, other brands as well. But again, I'm all about any electrification. Um, now, I guess with, with Outback EV is to try and maybe leave a bit of a legacy, um, but you know, in, in a way, the Outback EV is about, you know, making something, a difference out here in one of the hardest places to make a difference, if you know what I mean. And that's yeah. always been that way out here in the outback. It's Things are very far apart. We're always trying to get um, technology out here to help people along and that type of thing. So it's always been a bit of a challenge, but it's a lovely town here. And of course now it's all about proving to other people that 
Hey, look, it is very viable, even in the in the hardest place to charge places. The guys with the Teslas that came through at the time, they were all about improving the network. So we were trying to at least just get three phase out there. When you see plug share, you'll see all those three phase plugs. You know, I'd like to proudly say I had a bit to do with that. Um, certainly organising it, talking to people. I only ever visit fuel stations to, to steal their air and maybe buy a chocolate bar these days. Or unless they've got a char DC charger there, that's when I'll go. Or they've got three phase and you have to go ask, yeah, right? Yeah, that's right. And, and that's with the roadhouses, that's right. And yeah. And surprisingly, reluctantly, they, they do it, but they, they don't like doing it. I don't know why. They, we still pay the money. We're not asking them to do right. it for nothing. Yeah, yeah. We know they're charging from diesel. We get it. But in the interim, it's a way to get from A to B. It, it, is, it is pretty well known that even though it is diesel, it's still more efficient. But that's not what we're about. We're about having an alternate type um, arrangement with the cars. It is part of a bigger picture. It's not going to be the solution. It's, it's a part of a solution. Yep. And there isn't going to be any right solution because people are at different stages in the, in, the, in the changeover. How we can not only just do it in cities, but we can do it out in the country too. Sure, when I go bush, if I have to do any more than, say, 500, 600 k's in a day, it's a, there's a bit of a knack to it. But yep. when I'm going to Adelaide, it still takes me two days to drive to Adelaide and two days to drive to Darwin. A little bit different way of doing it. Your brakes are nicer. You certainly get a good good hour's break every time. You're not trying to rush from stop to stop. But that means you're, you know, you're, you're just making sure you're not um, um, pushing yourself too far as well. It's a chance encounter, I guess, yeah. last year. You were heading, yeah, yeah, you were heading to... Before. We can't quite figure out this time frame, but... You were heading to fully charged in... in well, probably either yeah, heading or coming away in, in yeah, Sydney. Yeah, yeah. And we were heading home to Canberra, and it was at the Dog and a Tucker Box, a yep. Gundagai yeah, Gundagai 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 Gundagai. It seems to be a very popular place, Gundagai. Yeah, it is a popular <laughs> place. So, was it, so, so yeah, we met, and I said, look, we're doing a lap of Australia. And what did you tell me? What did you I say said, to me? I said, well, look, you know, a lot of people have done laps of Australia. Why don't we do uh, a figure eight? So you can come through Alice Springs twice. <laughs> so let me tell you about these little guys. Um, so these are all 18650 um, um, pouches. Uh, they run a 43 volt um, instead of 48 volt, so they're a couple of cells short. Um, so again, a battery, battery come out of some... So it actually came out of a balloon. Okay. A, balloon. Oh. <laughs> a balloon, right? And um, these balloons were created by Google, and they they so basically loom, loom, loon project? system. Loon, yep. loon, yeah. loon, loon, as in as in loony, loony, <laughs> but balloon. I think is where it came from. Yeah. Um, so so initially the balloon the loon system um, launched from California. They flew them around the world like a big video game, and. Um, they initially were, were la they had to land them and I think the best they ever got out of a loon was about 100 days in the air. So, you know, I guess that's impressive. I, I would have thought a year would be good, but before something kind of broke down or become unflyable or... And you've got to remember, these things were, were basically a 4G repeater system, um, a big, big tower in the sky. So instead of, you know, you going through, say, a repeater on the, on the terrestrial, these things would fly overhead and they're trying to line them up like roulettes to always give you signal. But, you know, there would be times when you wouldn't have signal because yep. just the way the prevailing winds work. Um, so in the essence, they would, <laughs> for some reason, they were trying to land them in Madagascar, which is off the coast of um, Africa. Of course, they're getting a little bit tied up in the bush and stuff like that. So they're getting a bit hard to recover to try and recycle these things. Um, so believe it or not, they got the contract with Australia and they were just landing them north of Alice Springs okay. for, for a fair few years there. So we collected about 75 of these things. The, the crate, the, you know, the, the mechanism with all the gear on it was probably about 50, 60 kilos of payload. 10 of these batteries in each one. Four, four to six solar panels. So these are Hence, these are then those things. Now, unfortunately on the landing, <laughs> Um, yeah, you'd still get a bit of wind and dragage and go through our bush, but you know, the solar panels would be the ones that the copper hiding basically. So didn't really get to recover a lot of them that were working. Yep. Um, so hence why um, they've become test rigs. Um, a lot of them, get people, I, think I, I think we decked out a bus with one once, a mate, mate's bus, and he got about maybe about two kilowatts on top of his bus. So, and again, because they just, they're flexible, yep. just stick a, stick a flex them to the bus. So, you know, never had a problem since. And that's uh, enough to run his stuff. But we're trying to make sure that, you know, most of it got recycled. A lot of it, you know, we were actually mucking around with, they had a lot of aluminium, uh, not on the panels, but on the actual rig. So we actually tried doing a bit of melting down and reusing the aluminium for, um, for making gear on lathes and stuff like that. So, yeah. But the good thing is, I think we ended up with about 120 kilowatt hours of battery. <laughs> 
So that's going to go in a car somewhere or somehow you how to use it. You can stack so them up nice and square. You can stack uh, well, them up. yeah. The only downside is the BMS is actually part of it. It's actually along that circuit board there, and they tend to run themselves flat. Yeah. So hence why you'll see here I've been charging them up manually, and and at 42 volts, uh, 43.2, it's a bit of an odd voltage. Yeah, see, it's 200. So that's a quarter of a, a kilowatt hour sitting there. Yeah. Or yeah, a quarter. So it's 296. So a third of a kilowatt hour sitting there, right? Um, so, you know, it doesn't take much. Well, there's, you know, that's a kilowatt hour there at 43 volts, all right? Yep. So, um, um, yeah, I mean, that would push your car <laughs> for yep. two kilometres, exactly. technically. Yep. So, you know, it wasn't bad de energy density, you know. They're, they're not as good as li uh, lipos in the sense of you know, power to weight, but a lot less problem of, of catching a fire, which was always pretty good. So, yeah, again, another project. <laughs> so... You know, trying to, so we're having to actually split, split these packs down because the voltage is just not good. Um, not, a, not a handy voltage for anything. Um, it's got to be either 48 or, or high voltage for the car packs. So the idea is we'll reuse these because they've actually got quite good holders and stuff in them. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, we're having to pull the BMSs off and, and add new BMSs. So one of the, one of the little projects, the idea with that was to try and maybe turn them into um, a swap battery type idea. Um, yeah, initially that size would be great, but it's it's not big enough really unless it's a push bike. Yep. Um, you'd need something a bit better, say for a motorbike or, or a small vehicle, you may have three swap batteries. Mm -hmm. So we're going to use them to gut them into that. But how do we get a standard for swap batteries? You know, That's another thing I think we need to think about as, as engineers and decision makers. Decision makers. And this is where I guess one of those other myths of, you know, everything catches on fire that's got a battery. Um, yeah, so what about that myth? Yeah. Oh, that's, are there any stats? Oh, oh yeah, actually there is. They, they had some good ones out of the States from 2022, the, and, and particularly with cars, but obviously there's a lot more to it because pretty well everyone that's got, you know, a, a phone and is going to be watching this clip is going to have a, a lithium ion battery running that device of some sort. Yep. Um, even if it's a desktop computer, there's still lithium batteries inside doing the battery right, backup, right? On a, on an e <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. In the, in the big cities so, so the the big issue with fires, it in fact you brought it up, is these cheap sort of e-scooters and e-bikes that they're getting straight from China, no regulation, yeah. and they're not comparing that to um, a, uh, a a car that's been put in, put in fully examined both in Europe and America and here. Um, for safety, and that's where uh, they, they kind of basically forget that cars are a lot less prone to this because they actually do have those systems in there to, to prevent those fires. Um, stats from America were um, um, they did a, a whole year's worth of fires uh, comparison to, to ICE vehicles and hybrid vehicles. And uh, the, in fact, it was kind of, it was interesting. Um, the hybrid vehicles were the highest, um, about, so every 100,000 vehicles made, right, so produced, um, there was about 6,000 worth of hybrid vehicles that would catch on fire. Now, they didn't say how, but they so did for say, whatever reason, for whatever right? reason, yep. uh, internal combustion engine, ICE vehicles, there was actually about 3,500, and for full battery electric vehicles, 38. Zero, 38, that's yep. it. <laughs> like not not 1,000, 38. Yep. <laughs> so the, the, the initial risk of them actually catching on fire is way, way, way lower. Um, and then uh, there was actually a, uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, down in Victoria, there's um, a lady down there who's part of the, the CFS. Um, she's actually created an awareness group. She also builds electric vehicles as well, but she's created an awareness group. Uh, I think it's called evfiresafe.com mm -hmm. uh, from memory. Um, excellent, excellent. And she actually only keeps stats on there of fire stuff and on boats and on, you know, on ships and all this stuff that they, they keeps making the main headlines of news. They are, uh, they, they keep really good stats on the actual truth. Um, yep. So I think you'll think people need to just be aware of, of what the narrative is <laughs> and what people want you to hear mm -hmm. and do a little bit of homework and a little bit of digging and, and you'll be surprised what is really happening. Um, yep, there's anything we build comes from vegetation or from the earth, right? So we're still gonna have to mine, we're still gonna have to grow stuff. There's always a risk of stuff, you know, especially with electronics and electrical and fuel, anything that we build, it's always got the risk of catching on fire, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of what we're trying to recycle as well and, and, and see if we can turn into something that's um, useful. 
obviously not enough to, to feed the whole population, but they are enough to, to give people ideas of what we can do with stuff. So, you know, people are worried about how we're going to recycle batteries. We don't even need to recycle them. We're reusing them first, yeah, right? Yeah. Because these are probably 10-year-old batteries. They probably will have a lot more life in them because really they've done nothing. They've only probably discharged three or four times in their life when they've had a power failure. But otherwise, you know, that most of them, the real issues is they've been sitting there overcharged for 10 years. <laughs> so really what we've just got to go through is, is pick out, they're all pouch pouch, pouch cells in these, and, and these are all um, hard cells. So we just really got to go through them, put them through a cycle test, work out the, the amp hours of all of them individually. And that's just, a, it's a big job. Like, I mean, we're talking 22 batteries in one of those. Yeah. Um, you'll see here, I've, I've got crates full of the things. You know, it's just, it's just a never ending process of, uh, and I've actually set up a jig that does like, Fifth, uh, I think it's about 24 batteries at a time. Yep. Of course, it takes 24 hours to cycle. There you go, you know, how, how far do you go? Yep. So um, so that's actually kind of happens in the background in, in when I'm not you know, looking after other things. Cool. The history of charging in, um, in Alice, you know, yep. we've got the NRMA charger that yep. um, obviously is open this week as well, which is a bit that's of That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. now that's going to help bring, and hopefully bring um, some more people to Central Australia, come and see the rock, you know, come and see um, how, how we live out here and you know, um, we're, we're always looking for people to hire too. And yeah, I guess, the I guess uh, fast charging means you can travel at the NT speed limit on some yeah, of these roads, yeah. right? 100, fast charging would be good. We'd, we'd actually get a lot of places a lot quicker. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, thanks to oh, well, absolutely the federal government for, for supplying those and, and rolling them out so quick. We, we know it's an election year this year, so, you know, hopefully they might kick, kick it even faster. But we know there's a lot of investment going in there, so we're trying to help out where we can. So it's good. It's All good right. times. It's a lot happening this year, that's for sure. <laughs> well, good to meet you. Thank you. All right. Appreciate All it. All the best with the business here. and Yeah, yeah. No, out no. There Anytime and... anyone's in town, come for a coffee, come for a charge. All right. We'll sort you out. Cheers, Hunter. <laughs> They're perfect, those little guys. Um, oh, shit.